Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today we'll take a look into the life of a former NBA superstar who was picked second in the 1999 NBA draft. He came close to beating the invincible Vince Carter in the memorable 2000 slam dunk contest. His life took a huge turn once he started playing ball in college and made it to the NBA. Today's topic is, what happened to Steve Francis? But before we get into the video, don't forget to click on that like button and subscribe to the channel. Stephen Deshaun Francis was born on February 21, 1977 in Tacoma Park, Maryland. His grandmother started to look after him in 1995 because his mother passed away from cancer and his father was not in the picture. He came from a poverty-filled background living off food stamps and sharing an apartment with 18 people. He even started selling drugs at only 10 years old, just looking to survive. In high school, he attended six different schools, but only played in a total of two high school basketball games. After his mother's death, he dropped out of high school at 18 years old. He received an offer to play at San Jacinto Junior College, so he completed his GED. From 1997 to 98, Steve attended San Jacinto, and then from 1997 to 98, he attended Allegheny College of Maryland. After two great seasons, he attended the University of Maryland in 1998 for his junior year. He started in the shooting guard position, and by the end of season, he earned a spot on the All-ACC First Team and the All-Tournament Team. They were nationally ranked number two and made it to the Sweet 16 in the National Tournament. After only playing one season at Maryland, he declared for the 1999 NBA Draft. He was the second overall pick by the Vancouver Grizzlies, but he didn't want to play for them. He got what he wanted and was traded before the season started to the Houston Rockets. This was considered to be the biggest trade in NBA history involving three teams and 11 players, plus two future draft picks. His rookie season, he earned co-rookie of the year with Elton Brand and came in second place behind Vince Carter in the 2000 Slam Dunk Contest. Going into his sophomore season, he was chosen to start in the 2002 NBA All-Star Game and came in second place again, this time to Jason Richardson and the Slam Dunk Contest. He only played in 55 games this season because of a foot injury. The Rockets didn't perform too well without Steve playing. Going into the 2002-2003 season, the Rockets picked up the 7'6 center Yao Ming. The Rockets missed the playoffs again this season, but with the addition of Yao, the team improved their record drastically. Francis and Yao were both picked as starters in the 2003 All-Star Game this year. In the 2003-2004 season, Jeff Van Gundy became the new head coach, but his style of play tended to clash with Steve's playing style. His stats started to decline, dropping from 21 points per game to 16.6 points per game, but the Rockets finally made it to the playoffs for the first time since 1999. They lost early on to the Lakers. Francis ended up getting traded to the Orlando Magic for Tracy McGrady, Juwan Howard, Tyron Liu, and Reese Gaines. Van Gundy made these trades because he decided to focus most of his offense around the center, Yao Ming. And so bad. Philadelphia has not been a good rebounding team this year. They did out-rebound Toronto, and as good as you can do, way back when Allen was a rookie, Jerry Stackhouse averaged 20 a game, but that didn't work at all. Reverses it in. Eight points for Iverson. He's got eight of Philly's 15. The Sixers' lead is three. In the beginning of the 2004-2005 season, Steve adjusted to his new team and flourished in his new run-and-gun offense. He averaged 21.3 points, 5.8 rebounds, and 7 assists per game. Although the season started off strong for the Magic, they didn't finish strong and ended up missing the playoffs. After this season, there were trade rumors going around about him getting traded, and one day, right before the trade deadline, Francis was traded once again. He joined Stephen Marbury and the New York Knicks for the 2006-2007 season. Due to tendonitis in his right knee, his stats weren't high as usual. He only averaged 11.3 points per game. After the season ended, Francis was traded once again during the 2007 NBA Draft. Portland bought out the remaining two years of his contract, which turned him into an unrestricted free agent. In the summer before the 2007-2008 season, Francis made his return back to Houston and signed a two-year, $6 million contract deal. 
He didn't get much playing time and only averaged 5.5 points and 3 assists. He suffered from a season-ending injury to his quad and had surgery. For the 2008-2009 season, Francis decided to stay in Houston. He missed the preseason, still recovering from his quad injury, but as soon as he was able to take the floor again, the Rockets traded him back to Memphis, which was the team who originally drafted him. But before he could play in any games on a Memphis jersey, he was waived from the team. After this, no other team showed any interest in him. In November of 2010, Francis signed to play overseas with the Beijing Ducks, but he left the team after only one month of being in China. He only played in four games. After Steve left the basketball world, he struggled with the death of his stepfather. He started drinking consistently and was arrested for multiple DUIs and allegedly breaking into a woman's car. He never served any jail time, but had to complete tedious hours of community service and also pay a fine. In this case, you did what so many of us do, and that's self-medicating, and you got into trouble with alcohol. Yeah, I mean, after that, I mean, 18 months, I went from uh, stopped playing basketball to my dad's death. And, like, all of that was, it was just so, it just came so fast. Yeah. You know, my, my first dream is gone, my dad's gone. So, when you retire, you want to be able to go off in the sunset and go relax. But for me, it was just back to work again, like I didn't play. So. You know, I found myself in a dark place for a while um, with medication and help from my family, my grandmother, my sister. Like, now I, I understand what I went through those storms for to be here. Yeah, um, and you had that foundation set for you. So, you know, it's not that bad things won't happen to people. It's right. not that we might make, you know, b bad decisions to deal with those situations, but that you have a foundation that ultimately wins. And you had that foundation set for you that ultimately went, won. And you want to help set that foundation for some other kids. Tell us about your camp and your game. Uh, I, I, uh, Friday, we're doing Hoops for Heritage uh, at KIPP. We've been working with KIPP, the Steve Francis Foundation, and the Brenda Wilson Scholarship Fund. We've been working with KIPP since uh, 2004. Um, to be able to to see these kids who are in, you know, uh, low-income places and... Some oftentimes single-family homes. Single-family homes, yeah. things that I can relate to. Uh, that some of my friends, even my mom when she was here, we would, you know, we, we've adopted kids. My stepdad, we still have adopted kids, me and my sister. And uh, just to be able to, you know, to see the, the, the dreams in their eyes, yeah. just to see those kids, they don't want to you know, be another statistic because it's everything is on social media, everything is on the news that is right at their fingertips. And, uh, and the know, expectations for them, that their environment's going to define them, it doesn't have to. And, and when they hear a lot of that, I like the way that a lot of the kids, they don't want to be like that. It doesn't make a difference of your race, your age, or anything. And, I, and I'm, I'm so happy that I'm able to be involved. Yeah, so it's the first ever Hoops for Heritage charity basketball game. And uh, you have celebrity guests who will be there. Well, of course I'm going to be the biggest celebrity. Yeah, you're the, yeah, you're the, <laughs> no. Well, unless Slam Duncan shows up. How about that? <laughs> yeah, so I have, uh, of course, Moochie Norris will be there, uh, Cheryl Ford, uh, Confu just a, a, lot, a lot of people were known uh, to put on an entertainment show, and it's basically for the kids and raise some money, and hopefully, you know, we'll be able to build the gym that we need, and we'll be able to build some of the facilities throughout the community um, that, that, you know, that we want to head towards. Yeah, a lot of kids look at maybe playing sports and they look at the, the back end of maybe being a champion or making all the money or having all the So the three-time NBA All-Star and Rookie of the Year had it tough in the league, being consistently looked over and tossed around from team to team and being completely given up on was a harsh reality he had to deal with. Thanks for tuning in to watch today's episode as we looked at what happened to Steve Francis. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time. This show is brought to you by Jam Time Machine Radio, the finest of old school black and pop music. Check out www.jamtimemachine.com and listen to non-stop old school black and pop music. Jam Time Machine Radio, more than just music.